In the previous two lectures, we have completed scaling of continuous time signals. The next basic operation is shifting. Whatever we are going to learn in this lecture, we can definitely apply on discrete time signals. So I will not upload separate lectures on basic operations of discrete time signals. Shifting is of two types. Shifting is of two types. The first one is time shifting and the second one is amplitude shifting. In this lecture I will explain time shifting and in the next lecture we will deal with amplitude shifting. Let's say the original signal is xt and after time shifting after time shifting the new signal is equal to yt. In case of time shifting we add a constant to the time. Let's say the constant is equal to small k so signal yt, the new signal, is equal to x inside the bracket t plus k. So if you compare xt, the original signal, with yt, the new signal, you can see there is difference in time. Here we have time t, but here we have t plus k. And as we are adding k to the time t, k is also a time and it is constant and generally it is given in seconds. Now depending on k, we have two cases. In case number 1, in case number 1, k is greater than 0 or we can say k is positive. The original signal, the original signal xt is defined like this. It is equal to 0 when time t is less than 0. It is equal to 2 when time t is less than equal to 2 but it is greater than equal to 0. It is again 0 when time t is greater than 2 and once you plot this you will have the waveform like this and now we will perform the time shifting. We will perform the time shifting with k equal to plus 2 and as k is equal to plus 2 case number 1 is satisfied and we will find out the new signal which is yt. yt is simply equal to xt plus 2 because k is equal to 2 and uh, we will first see one example. We will try to understand how we have to perform the time shifting using this example and after that we will plot the waveform for the new signal yt. In this example there is a time bomb with timer indicating 10 minutes and this time bomb will explode at 12 minutes. You can see two wires in this time bomb and when you cut the red wire the bomb will explode two minutes earlier. The bomb will explode two minutes early and when you cut the green wire the bomb will not explode. And let's say by mistake you cut the red wire so what will happen to this time bomb? As soon as we cut the red wire, the time bomb will explode. It was about to explode at 12 minutes but now it is exploding at 10 minutes. The bomb was about to explode at 12 minutes but now it is exploding at 10 minutes. So by cutting the red wire, we are reducing the time by 2 minutes or we can say or we can say we are adding 2 minutes to the instantaneous time. 10 minutes is the instantaneous time and we are adding 2 minutes by cutting the red wire to the instantaneous time to explode the bomb. So let us try to summarize this thing. When we add 2 minutes to the instantaneous time, the event will occur early by 2 minutes. Here the event is explosion of the time bomb and in general case we can say that on adding the time to the instantaneous time, the events will occur earlier. I will use this concept to plot yt, the new signal which is equal to x t plus 2. So here we are adding 2 seconds to the instantaneous time and because of this we will get everything 2 seconds early. In case of original signal xt, when time t is equal to 0, xt is equal to 2. When time t is equal to 0, xt is equal to 2. This means x of 0 is equal to 2 and in case of new signal yt we are getting everything 2 seconds early 
zero is the instantaneous time and two seconds early means time t equal to minus two. So y of minus two is also equal to two. Y of minus two is also equal to two. In the same way, when time t is equal to two, x t is equal to two. So x of two is equal to two and two is the instantaneous time. So two seconds early means t equal to zero. So y of zero is equal to two. Now we have the complete information to plot the waveform of the new signal. We will plot it quickly. When time t, when time t is equal to minus two, y t is equal to two. When time t is equal to zero, y t is again equal to two. I will join these points and the resultant waveform is the waveform of the new signal. You can clearly see the whole waveform, the whole waveform is shifted to the left by two seconds. So this case, the case number one in which k is greater than zero is the case of left shifting or you can say time advance. This is the case of left shifting or we can say time advance. This case is very important because it creates a little bit confusion in our mind. You can see we are adding two seconds to the time. So generally it feels like the signal will move forward or you can say the signal will be delayed. But in reality the signal will be advanced depending on the value of k. Now we will move to the next case of the time shifting. In this case, in case number two, small k is less than zero or we can say small k is negative. We will take another example to understand the case number two. In this example, I will take the original signal xt which is equal to three, which is equal to three when time t is equal to zero and it is equal to zero when time t is equal to minus two and it is again equal to zero when time t is equal to two. I will join these points and this is how the original signal xt will look. Now we will perform, we will perform the time shifting with a small k equal to minus two. Small k is negative so case number two is satisfied and as I have already explained you when we add the time to the instantaneous time we will get everything early but when we subtract the time from the instantaneous time everything will be delayed and the new signal the new signal yt is equal to yt is equal to x inside the bracket t minus 2 because k is equal to minus 2 so in this case we are subtracting 2 seconds from the instantaneous time so we will get everything 2 seconds later so the waveform will look like this when time t is equal to 0 we will have y t equal to 0 when time t is equal to 2 when time t is equal to 2 y t is equal to 3 when time t is equal to 4 y t is equal to 0 and when we compare the original signal with the new signal we can see the whole waveform is shifted to the right so case number 2 when k is less than 0 is the case of right shifting this is the case of right shifting or we can say this is the case of time delay this is the case of time delay. In this case, we are getting everything two seconds later or we can say everything is delayed by two seconds. So this lecture is very important if we talk about the basic operations on continuous time signals because it is little bit confusing. In this case, you can see we are subtracting two seconds from the instantaneous time. So our general instinct will tell us that this waveform will be shifted like this by two seconds but in reality it is shifted like this 
In case of time shifting, shape of the waveform remains the same. You can see the shape of the waveform is similar. Only the signal is shifted to the left or to the right. So shape will not change in time shifting. Advancing the signal is not possible in real time. If we talk about the case number one, in this case, there is advancement in the signal. Advancing the signal is not possible in real time, but it is possible when the signal is recorded. So we can advance this signal only when we have the recorded signal or we have the idea or knowledge of the signal. So in real time, we cannot advance the signal. This is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. In the next lecture, I will explain the amplitude shifting.